Hey, my name is Dave. I'm one of the partners at Black Chair. I'm kind of a business nerd. My background is in electrical engineering um, and computer programming, but what I love to do most is finding ways to build systems that help businesses succeed. Kind of for the past several years as a hobby, one of the things that I've been doing is the Manitoba Business Podcast, where I interview successful business leaders and entrepreneurs from throughout the province. Uh, today we're gonna go check out a new business in Winnipeg that's Manitoba's first family-owned craft distillery. They make the smoothest vodka you've ever had, really, really good gin, um, and they make it right here, and they're they're the first ones in Manitoba since forever, basically. All right, so we're just pulling up here, looking forward to having a chat with Jesse um, and learn more about what this Capital K thing is all about. Hello, hello, hey, Jason. Oh my goodness, that friggin' doorbell is broken again. How's it going? <laughs> hey. Nice to meet you. Nice I'm not Jason, you. I'm Jesse. Sorry. Oh, Jesse. Yes. Hey. Nice to meet you, Jesse. Jesse. Nice to meet you guys, too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We've got Jesse here instead of Jason. Um, Jesse is, is another uh, another partner here at uh, the distillery. How about we start by having you tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. I am the assistant general manager here at Capital K Distilleries. I basically assist in just about every aspect of the business, hence why my, uh, my job title is so broad. Um, I'm a part of everything from production to PR to event coordinating and uh, like I said, just about every aspect of the business. So tell me about Capital K itself. What's the founding story and what, what's Capital K doing? The founding story of Capital K Distilleries uh, actually came from the owner, Jason Kang. He was a home brewer for many, many years uh, making his own uh, beer, uh, particularly stout beer. And one day he uh, kind of thought to himself, man, I gotta make like, more alcohol somehow uh, <laughs> with using less materials and that kind of spawned this intense kind of uh, passionate hobby that was you know craft home distilling which kind of evolved into well I actually want to make a business out of this. What, what constitutes a craft distillery? For lack of better terminology we do everything by hand. Um, you know we are a grain to bottle facility. Uh, we receive our grain which is 100% non-GMO Manitoba wheat um, and it leaves our facility looking like a bottle of our product. So we cool. do absolutely everything here. Fermentation, mashing, distillation, uh, bottling, labeling and we keep our, we hold ourselves to a, uh, a very high uh, standard of quality. Very cool, very cool. And by the way, I mentioned it off camera before but um, <clears throat> big fan of the product. Thank you. I, I've, I've sampled my fair share and mm. uh, very, very good. Can you give me a sense of the, the volume that you're distributing nowadays? Per week, we're selling approximately 120 bottles within the province. Oh, cool. Um, that's mostly coming out of the uh, the LCs. Somewhat, some of it's going through the restaurants and a little bit less of it is going uh, right out of the door here at the facility. But since we are still underneath that uh, one year threshold, um, our, our sales come and go. We're also producing new products, um, you know, what seems like almost quarterly. There's now been a new product that comes out. We started originally with tall grass vodka, um, the most uh, simplest spirit to uh, produce. Um, then we came out with the tall grass gin, um, the tall grass espresso vodka using DeLuca's espresso beans. Um, cool. Then when the tall, when tall grass dill pickle came out, you know, we had a bit of a sales uh, spike because we, uh, I mean, I'll try and be humble, but uh, you know, the tall grass dill pickle was uh, it's selling really, really well. It's very, very popular, and so we had that bit of a sales spike. Um, well, Manitobans do love their Caesars. And they what, do love their Caesars. How can you make they a better Caesar than with dill pickle? pickle yeah, exactly. <laughs> what kind of strategies or what kind of opportunities do you see? sort of helping you expand your market share and getting getting your name out to more and more Minnesotans? Um, I think now it's just about building that brand awareness. Um, we live in a day and age where we've kind of got, uh, we're in kind of a limbo between the old and the new. Um, when it comes to things like purchasing advertising, which can be, you know, a, a fairly hefty investment, yep. um, you always have to consider, uh, you know, 
how can you kind of track uh, uh, what you're what you're investing in advertising wise? Um, I know that uh, it's great to be it's it's great to have guys from Black Chair uh, here to kind of uh, give us uh, you know a bit of a scoop on kind of what the leading trends are because you you have that kind of uh, that in between space where you're like well do we go you know super modern and invest in social media and things like that yep. or can we still you know invest in some of the older methods like you know ads and billboards and things like that um, and it, I think it all comes down to uh, like right now I mean any any publicity is good publicity um, except for like an E. coli outbreak <laughs> like but um, you well, know the vodka kills it it's all good oh, yeah that's true that's true it's fine, it's fine. very cool mm -hmm. Well, Jesse, um, I'm done pestering you with questions, <laughs> right. and, and I'm eager to do the tour and especially to sample some of these guys. So absolutely. Well, thank you very much. Well, this is it. This is where the uh, the magic happens. Um, as you can see, we are by uh, every definition a micro distillery. Um, everything from grain to bottle happens within this big room right here. So this is, uh, this is uh, Manitoba white wheat. Uh, I believe the cultivar is Gateway white wheat. Yes, and that is uh, one of the, pro one of the uh, wheats that we use in our mash. We just use two wheats, uh, white wheat and rye. We use the white wheat for its uh, sweet, smooth kind of mouthfeel that it creates in the vodka. Um, we use the rye and uh, just a teeny tiny little bit of rye. Um, for some added complexity, you know, a teeny little bit of spice, um, but it pairs really well with the white wheat. Afterwards, when we have our recipe, we come over here to our very old timey, uh, needs to be upgraded uh, mill. And uh, yeah. <laughs> so that's a hopper there? And then you Absolutely, and it comes right out oh, through crazy. there. 10 and minutes. are you manually carrying the green from Oh that? my God, no. Uh, we are using the uh, forklift. <laughs> okay. um, so we I fork. you were doing it in pails, like what was in there? No, oh my gosh, no. <laughs> Although, before we got those totes, I was uh, manually uh, weighing the product. So I would <laughs> scoop out 450 Jeez. kilograms of grain. Over here, we have our big pot still. I call her Bertha, so she's, uh, yeah, she's hot. Once we have or, uh, uh, cooked our mash, we bring it over here to one of the fermenting tanks. Um, we just basically pump the mash right into here. We add our yeast and we let it sit. When we pump it back into here uh, in three or four days from now, we will close the hatch, turn the heat on. It will go through this one very simple still. What happens at the end of the day is we have this product, which is, uh, I guess it's, an industry slang term, but we have this product, we call it low wine. Once we have three of these barrels, which is the equivalent to two mashes through there, um, we bring them over here and we stick them through our uh, spirit still. Yep. So we have our pot right here with a copper head. We have a four plate copper column and a 16 plate stainless steel column. When we take that, that low wine, that gross distillate, uh, we put it in through here. We will run it one time just through the copper uh, column. Three barrels of low wine, once it has gone through the still, equals one barrel of finished product. Man, that was awesome. Jesse is super cool. Capital K has a lot going on. Um, I think probably there's gonna be an opportunity for us to work together, which I'm pumped about, but also everybody should, should go and check out their drinks because uh, they're making something special right here in Manitoba from Manitoba product. I'm excited about it.